In this video, I'm going to show you how to evaluate a composite function. A composite function is a function that is formed from two functions, let's say f of x and g of x, in which the output or the result of one of the functions is then used as the input of the other function. Sometimes it could also be used as the input of the same function that we started with. Let's begin with mapping notation. So we can look at a composite function using mapping notation. Let's consider the function f of x equals to 2x and g of x equals to x squared plus 3. And we're going to take a look at two different cases. So in the first case, the output values of f of x become the input values of g of x. We're going to start with these five x values from negative 2 to positive 2, and we're going to substitute this into f of x. So we're going to take 2 times all of these different x values. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and so on. 2 times 0, 2 times 1, and 2 times 2. Now these outputs, or the f of x values, then become the input of g of x. So now we're going to take negative 4, and we're going to substitute it in for x in the g of x function. So now we have negative 4 squared, and then plus 3, which then gives us 19. Negative 2, we're going to square that, and that becomes 4 plus 3, which gives us 7. And we continue with the other outputs of f of x. So 0 squared plus 3, 2 squared plus 3, and then 4 squared plus 3, which gives us 19. So notice that the values that we had for the output for f of x are then substituted into the x value for g of x to give us this final values in this last bubble here. In case 2, let's see what happens when we take the output values of g of x and then input them into f of x. So here we have negative 2, which we're going to put into g of x. So we have negative 2 squared plus 3, which is 7. Negative 1, put in for x, for g of x, squared, which is 1, plus 3, which is 4. And we continue um, with the other x values as well. So 0 squared plus 3, 1 squared plus 3, and then 2 squared plus 3. Now these g of x, these outputs of g of x, then become the input of f of x. So we're going to substitute 7, 4, 3, 4 and 7, into the x for the 2 times x value. So we have 2 times 7, which is 14, 2 times 4, which is 8, 2 times 3, which is 6, 2 times 4 is 8 again, and then 2 times 7 is 14. Now notice that the n value, the end results, for both of these case 1 and case 2, we get different values. So it's very important that you identify which uh, function that we substitute into first, and then which value is then going to be substituted into the second function. Now we can write this, instead of using mapping notation, I'm going to show you the function notation for the composite function. So in case one, uh, notice that the outputs of f of x become the inputs of g of x. So what we're doing is we're evaluating f of x first, and then we're taking that value and plugging it into g of x. Now the composite function notation looks like this, g with little circle, f, and then x. So this is read as g of f of x, or g at f of x. So this means we calculate f of x first, and then we substitute that value into x for the g function. In case 2, the output values of g of x then become the input values of f of x. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate g of x first, and then that value then gets substituted into f of x. So it's like we're doing order of operation where we need to work with the inside or the innermost bracket first.
So in function notation, the composite function would be written with f with a little circle and then g in closed brackets and then x. Now the little circle does not mean time, so make sure you put it as a little circle as to opposed to a dot, which means multiplication. So in this case, it is read as f of g of x or f at g of x. So again, it means we substitute into the x value into the g function first, get that answer, and then we substitute that answer into the x for the f function. So very important that you understand the difference between g of f of x and f of g of x because we often don't get the same answer. So let's take a look at some examples where we don't use mapping notation. So in this first one here, we have f of g of 4. So that means that we're going to take the 4 and we're going to substitute it into x for the g function first. So we're going to calculate g of 4. So g of 4 means that we're going to go 2 times 4 plus 5, which gives us 13. So that means that g of 4, this what I've boxed here in blue, is actually equal to 13. So I'm going to replace g of 4 with the number 13. So we have f of 13, and that equals 2. We're going to plug it into the f function. 3 times 13 minus 2, which equals 37. All right, let's try another one. So this time we're going to calculate f of 4. So we're taking the number 4, and we're going to put it in for x for the f function first. So f of 4 is equal to 3 times 4 minus 2, which equals 10. So f of 4 is 10, so I'm going to replace what I have here in, that I've boxed in blue with the number 10. So g of 10 is equal to 2 times 10 plus 5, because now I'm plugging in the 10 into this g function here. And that gives us 25. So that was f of g and g of f of 4. All right, now these last two here have g of g and f of f. So same thing, we're going to calculate the innermost function first, which is g of 4, which we did above. So it's 2 times 4 plus 5, which equals 13. And then we're going to replace this g of 4 with the number 13, or our output then becomes the input. Now notice that this is g on the outside as well. So we're going to put the number 13 back into x for the g function again. So putting g of 13, g of 13 means we're going to go 2 times 13, and then plus 5, which gives us 31. Similarly, with f of f of 4, we're going to calculate f of 4, the innermost function first. So we're going to take 4 and put it into x. We get 3 times 4 minus 2, which is 10, just like above. But this time we're going to take the 10, and because the outer function is still f, we're going to take the 10 and substitute it into x for the f function. So now we have f of 10, or you can also think of this as taking the 10 and replacing this f of 4 with the number 10. So f of 10 equals 3 times 10 minus 2, which equals 28. In the next example, I'm going to show you how to substitute a function into another function. So given f of x is equal to root x plus 3, and g of x is equal to x squared minus 1, determine f of g of x and g of f of x. And also we're going to state the domain of all four functions. Now f of g of x, written as kind of looks like fog of x, I find it easier to write it as f bracket and then g open another bracket and then of x. So in this notation here, it's easier to see what we're going to substitute in first and then where we take that output and where we're going to put that as our input. So g of x right here can be replaced with x squared minus 1 because g of x is equal to x squared minus 1. 
So I'm going to rewrite this as f bracket and then x squared minus 1. So now I have f of x squared minus 1. That means that this expression here is what we're going to substitute in for x for the f function. So in this case, this is going to go into here to replace that x. So now we have the square root and then x squared minus 1, which is replacing the x here. And then we have the plus 3. So simplifying this, we now have x squared plus 2. So again, we're going to take the function x squared minus 1, which is the innermost function, and then we're going to replace the x of the second function, which is the outside one, which is f. So we're going to take an x squared minus 1, and we're really placing, replacing the x here. Now the other function, g of f of x, is done in reverse. So this means g bracket f open another bracket of x. So this time I'm going to replace this f of x with the function root x plus 3. Since f of x is equal to root x plus 3. Now this time I'm going to take my root x plus 3 because it says we're going to substitute that into the g function because it, is, because it says g of root x plus 3. We're going to take this, and this time we're going to substitute it in for the x over here because we have to put it in for the x for the g function. So this becomes root x plus 3 all squared and then minus 1. When we substitute it in, we're just replacing the x. Notice there's no more g or f or any letter that determines which function it is. Okay, So simplifying this, we get x plus 3 and then minus 1. And then x plus 3 minus 1 is then x plus 2. All right, so finding the domain and range, the first function, f of x, that has a domain where x has to be greater or equal to negative 3 since we have a root function and it has to always be positive inside this root. g of x is a parabola, so we can see that that x here is going to be all real numbers. For the f of g of x function, The domain here, we can see that um, we have to square root a positive. So if you want to work it out, this has to be x squared plus 2 is greater or equal to 0. And we can see that's always going to be the case since x, no matter what we choose, it will always be positive since we're squaring this. So in this case, x can be all real numbers. And then finally, g of f of x. Taking a look at our final equation here, we have x plus 2. It's an equation of a line, so the domain is also all real numbers.